Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a Saturday afternoon episode of Ted's Boo Cellar with me, your most gracious host, Ted. It's currently just about to go five minutes past three on the 28th of October 2023. I hope I'm finding you all in a good state of affairs and if I'm not then I hope things improve for you very soon. We're going to go for something pretty simple as far as I can see today. And we're going to be going for one of the home brand beers from Sainsbury's. Now, Sainsbury's in the past have generally been pretty decent in terms of the quality of home brand alcohol that they provide. Aldi is also right up there for the supermarkets in terms of the quality of home brand stuff as well. But this is one that I've only just seen today when I went in there to get some groceries. And this is Sainsbury's Celebration Ale. This is a Sriracha Ace and Equinox Hops. It's lemon with tropical fruit and subtle herbaceous notes. It's a 7.9% alcohol volume one. It's 750 milliliters and it was four pounds from Sainsbury's. So I think for the size of the beer and the strength and considering it's got some pretty good citrusy hops in there, I think that's a very decent, respectable price. I will say right now that I really like the design of the bottle and the label. Again, considering it's a home brand supermarket kind of thing, it's obviously going to be a little bit corporate and a little bit overly clean and sanitized. So I wish there was a bit more sharp, out there, vibrant designs on the bottle. But I mean, to be fair, generally speaking, the sort of like the honey and the honeycomb sort of shades of gold alongside the black and the purple down here really creates this nice, rich, understated you know, visage, and it does look like a really nice bottle, plus it gets extra points for having the cork on top of the bottle here, so very nice, I quite like that indeed. It reminds me of like a proper old bottle of like Leffe or Hoagarden or something like that, so yeah, very nice indeed. I'll give it a respectable, you know what, I'll give it a 9 actually. I think it does actually look really good, so yeah, a 9 out of 10 I think is more than respectable for something like this. Anyways, let's try and open it as uh, safely as we can without knocking our eyes out because obviously considering it's a cork bottle it will be quite heavily pressurized so just need to be quite careful about this okay so uh, not too heavily carbonated in there so it's clearly been bottled up pretty well actually so yeah hmm, nice nose actually a little bit understated but yeah, it's got this nice, simple, tropical, citrusy smell there that actually really works quite well. Very simple. A little bit of a herbally after smell. Yeah, that actually smells pretty good. There's just something missing, but I'll give still get the nose in the bottle like a decent, I don't know, like 8 out of 10 or something like that. It still is really nice. Okay, so it's definitely quite hoppy, so obviously you do have to pour it quite carefully. I tried to pour it more like a lager, really, but it didn't work out too well because I've kind of screwed up the head a bit. Let's have a quick snifter. Yeah, it's it's pretty weak, though, in the glass of the nose, I've got to say. It's, um, yeah, in the gl glass, it's like a six. It's definitely still a nice-smelling drink, but it's just a lot more subdued, really, and... Not in the best way, it just feels a bit like less characterful and a little bit less full of character. I don't know. It's, it still smells good though, so I'll give the nose in the glass like a decent 6 out of 10 at least. Alright, so I went and I properly sorted out the head in the now so it doesn't look quite like a beer flavoured milkshake. But uh, before we see what this sucker tastes like, quick palate cleanser. And then, on to the most important part of the video, which is to see what this sucker tastes like. So, to everyone at home, bottoms up, have a good weekend ahead, see you on the flip side. It's an interesting one actually, because it kind of tastes like a very mild citra IPA without that, without too much of like the heavy bitterness at the end. But then the main body of the texture is almost kind of like a Belgian wheat beer. Um, you know, it's got this sort of like rough, sort of hazy wheatiness in the middle of it. But then at the start, it's complemented by that sort of tart citrusiness that kind of cuts through that and sort of like keeps it quite understated and sort of very sort of mellow. 
and then sort of those two flavours kind of combine together at the end uh, to create quite an interesting but you know drinkable drinking experience. Um, yeah, there's a bit of a hoppy aftertaste there. Again, pretty understated, not too overpowering. Um, the main through line of the flavour, I think, is this very sort of mild citrus with like a sort of citrusy rind kind of aftertaste and it's undercut by yeah what almost feels like this sort of like tiny rosemary-ish kind of herbaliness um it doesn't sound like obviously from the description i'm making that that would sound like it works but it actually does work reasonably well i would still say that the main characteristics of the flavour could be a bit more full-bodied, could be a bit more prominent in general, but to be honest, overall, it's a decent enough home brand beer. Um, yeah, it's not too bad. And for a 7.9% British beer, although to be fair, this beer was made in France, so yeah, definitely. Uh... Although, yeah, I think for a 7.9% alcohol volume beer, this is really smooth, although then again, this beer is actually French, so that probably explains it. The French and Belgians do make pretty nice, smooth, strong beers, so yeah, that probably has a fair bit to do with it. Yeah, I was going to say as well, this is made by... I'm not going to read that. I'm just going to put it on the screen, because otherwise Imogen will be really upset with me again. It's very close to champagne, and indeed, if you get a red one, which I don't know whether this is or not, but based on the fact that it's called Rubin, which is a German word for ruby, I'm going to assume it is. It's the closest thing to a red champagne you would ever get. So, yeah, I'll just put the name of the brewery up on screen when I can uh, come round to editing it. But yeah, I'm going to say it needs more character and it needs a slightly fuller body of flavour. And the aftertaste is a little bit characterless, but generally speaking, this is still pretty good. So I'll probably give it like a respectable 7 out of 10. It's decent. It's just not blowing me away. But for a home brand beer, it is really, really good stuff. And for four quid as well, for I think the size of the bottle particularly, you could definitely do a hell of a lot worse. So yeah, give it a shot. It's probably a good sort of entry point for like blonde ales because it is a blonde ale, but it does have slight characteristics of other European beers that you might find out and about. So yeah, I'd definitely give it a shot. It's got characteristics of like a blonde beer, slight characteristics of like an IPA, and it's got slight characteristics of wheat beers as well. So it's got a bit of everything for everyone, I think. But I don't know. Give it a shot and see what you think. It's one of the more unique blonde beer ales I've had recently. So yeah, it's not too bad. Pretty good stuff. It's definitely a 7 out of 10, I'd say. But if you guys like this video, leave a like, share, and subscribe. If you have any suggestions for future episodes of Ted's Boo Cellar, let me know in the comments section down below. If you want to check out any of my other social medias, I'll leave the links to those in the video description down below. And until next time, I'll see you guys at the bar next time on Ted's Boo Cellar. Bye-bye for now.